All right, that has got to be one of the most fun shots that you can hit. You set landing on the left side of the fairway, and that is just going to roll and roll. It'll go forever. When the fairways are firm, the stinger is a fantastic shot to hit. You don't even have to hit it that hard. It's going to get on the ground. It's really going to scoot. So that one carried 234 and rolled out to 272. So pretty daggone good. I got my ping blueprint two iron here. This thing's pretty sweet looking. Probably not the most forgiving, but you can do this shot with a hybrid, with a, a three wood even, anything with low loft. Now, the number one mistake that I see with this, one of the first ones I see is players try to get it low by hitting down on the ball and they'll put it way back in their stance on their back foot. They'll feel like they're gonna chop down in this golf ball and what ends up happening, when you hit down, it creates a lot of backspin and that ball will start off low, but it kind of balloons up. You notice how that one went low. You could almost see it going, you know, never higher than the trees there. And then when it hit, it scooted, it ran. That only happens when I swing level. Notice how I just kind of brushed the turf. I didn't really even take much of a divot. I could hit down a little bit more than I did there, but I want to play that ball kind of in my normal ball position. If I play it back at all, I don't want to get it much more than say one ball back of, of, of normal. So if this is my normal ball position to where I'm going to hit a nice high one, I'm going to play it about right there. I mean, almost the exact same. Now, what I'm doing to take the loft off of it without hitting down is what the pros are doing pretty much on all their shots. So I don't want to chop down on it to hit, take loft off. I want to use my body to get lower, get the shaft lean. And what you can do is you can put your club on the ground. You really use your legs here and have that club scoot on the ground the entire time. Now, I don't want to do this and have the face open while I'm doing that. That's going to be a block to the right. I want to get it on the ground, get it squared up. So you can see my club face is actually squared up toward the turf. And then there, I'm using my body to rotate through the shot. I really feel like my legs are engaged. I really feel like I can get tons of lean on this, but I'm not just slamming it down to the ground. That way it's gonna come off low, very well compressed, and then it's gonna hit the ground running. So again, basically normal ball position. I'm really just gonna make sure that I get that lean and kind of brush the turf slightly down is fine. And that's gonna be a low knuckler. Let's try it out. I actually hit that one, that was actually pretty cool. I was trying to exaggerate and I hit it so low, not a good shot, but I'm just doing a little too much of a good thing. I hit it so low, I actually hit it solid, but it skimmed the turf of this tee box. So uh, if you do that much, it could actually be a little bit of a negative thing. But most people are not gonna do that to where you're gonna hit it so low, it's gonna actually skim the grasses coming through. If we look at the, uh, the loft on that, we're gonna be able to see that it's pretty low. I had five degrees aloft on that club at impact, 4.9 degrees. So that's just doing a great thing to the extreme. I felt like I got low, rotated my body, and I got tons of forward shaft lean, which I love for most players, players to do. Now the next thing I, make, I wanna make sure that I don't do is square it with the release of this club. So a lot of times players will use the release of the club or kind of a little bit of a casting motion to feel like they square the face up. You can see how now that face is square. Well, if I'm used to doing it that way, when I get my hands leaning in front, look how the face is wide open now. So if you're used to squaring it up doing this, when you push the hands in front to get forward shaft lean, look how the face is way over this way, that ball's gonna go a mile to the right. So what you have to make sure you're doing is go back to this drill again where it's on the ground, and I'm actually gonna rotate my wrist to get that face squaring up. You'll see how that closes the club face down. And now from there, I can rotate on through and this club face is square. See how now it's not open, it's actually squared up that way. And that allows me to hit that nice tight draw even when I get forward shaft lean. Another thing I see players do is they try to shove the hands in front of the body. So if you can imagine, this is my belt buckle and my shirt buttons. And we have this visual, most players tend to stand up a little bit, the body doesn't get very open, and then again, square with that release, that flip, and the body isn't open, so they think, well, I need to get more forward shaft lean. I'm gonna keep the body in this position and just throw the hands out there again. Now, in addition to opening the face like we just talked about, it's actually impossible to get the hands on the left side of your body at impact. Because of the rotation of my body, there's a lot of speed, and my hands just can't catch up and go past my body without releasing the club. So if you imagine your center line is your belt buckle and your chest, 
it can never really get the hands maybe a tiny bit in front of them, but you'll never get the hands on this side of the belt buckle by a noticeable amount. Now that seems pretty daggone counterintuitive. How am I supposed to get forward shaft lean if my hands can't lean the shaft forward? Well, it actually comes from rotation of the body. So when I rotate my body and I have my hands on the right side, they're actually lean forward. So for example, let me go ahead and rotate. I'm gonna keep my relationship with my hands, arms, and club the same, and I'm gonna point my hips, instead of being open like this, I'm gonna point them to be square to the camera. That's where my hands are at impact. It's my body that's rotated open that allows them to get forward. So those two pieces, rolling the face and rotating the body, go hand in hand together. If I'm not doing both of those, I'm not gonna be able to get this great stinger shot. So again, notice how my body rotates open and that club face closes early. There we go. Again, a bullet that barely got over the height of the trees and that's gonna take off running just down the right edge of the fairway. So it's that body rotation, that club face squaring up that allows you to get the lean of the shaft. So now the last thing we wanna do there to make sure this works is we don't wanna keep that right heel glued to the ground. When I have to, if I want to get that forward shaft lean, we talked about how I have to get my belt buckle opened up at impact. I have to get it on this side of my body. That way my hands can be behind my belt buckle and still have forward shaft lean, just like this at impact. Now, if my right heel stays glued down, for most players that aren't very flexible, which is the majority of players, I find that that's going to stall the hips out and then the hands and arms are going to flip to try to reach, to keep this club moving some speed. So I don't, I'm completely fine letting that right heel feel like it does this as you're coming through impact. So I'm gonna rotate that right heel to let my hips open up a little bit more, which is completely fine. Now, if that right heel only lifts an inch or it lifts four or five inches, I'm completely fine with that as long as the body keeps on rotating open. Let's give that a whirl. There we go, another stinger down the left edge. Now there's one thing that I touched on there briefly that really is kind of the piece that locks all this in together. If you don't do this one right, nothing we've talked about here today is gonna to work at all. And that's this squaring of the club face. If my club face is open, then I'm gonna end up flipping my hands. If my club face is open, I'm gonna stall the body and release with my hands. If my club face is open, then I'm gonna to tend to stall the body, keep that right foot down and flip it. So it doesn't matter which piece you're working on until you get that left wrist to work properly and to square this club face up, it's gonna be kind of like swimming upstream. You're really never gonna get it to work. I have a great video that's gonna walk you through kind of a, a missing piece of this, kind of a trick to square up the hands in a very intuitive way that I call the tennis racket drill. I wanna play a preview of that video here in a second. All you need to do is go ahead and click the link that pops up on your screen, the, the iCard. If you don't see the iCard, don't worry about it. Go down to the description below Click the link there and you'll get instant access to that video. You'll start learning how to square up the hands like the pros are. And now you can get the club from the inside. You can start the body rotating. You can have forward shaft lean. All these great things that you're seeing the pros doing will now make sense. Best of luck and I'll see you in the tennis racket drill. Good player problems. We're gonna talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked, about, worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all uh, of the, the top players is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it, the flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here, you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane, as I go to the top of the swing, I'm gonna be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time, I'm gonna be...